Well, good morning, friends, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Renee. Um, I have been busy. I've got my market stand all set up, which I'm going to show you that. Um, I've been working on my garden. I've got loads of orders in my greenhouse. Just been so busy. I've been planting a lot of stuff, and it got cold. It was like 80 degrees yesterday, and then right away it dropped to about 50 and down to 37 last night but my vegetables were fine they 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 did just fine even my tomatoes and my tender plants they did fine we don't get a whole lot of frost i mean we do but not as often as farther inland because we're right along maybe i want to say 15 miles from lake michigan so we're protected a little bit from the warmth of that anyway I want to show you my garden. Take a look, friends. It's doing wonderful, and that bucket in the middle of my garden is just what I've been throwing a few rocks in as I go along in uh, rototill. But I've got a little rototiller for this, and it's fantastic. It's only about 14 inches wide, but it does a fantastic job, and I can handle it so easy. But if you can see here, you can see I've got my sunflowers all planted, and they're doing fantastic all mixed all different kinds so anyway I'm gonna take you down here and I've got beans coming up you can see them right there I got them coming up all along through here so in this section here that I've got all tilled up you can see I got my potatoes over there those are my um, German butterhead potatoes and those I've got hilled up and hold real good um, I'm also going to put a row of dill in here, a row of cabbage, and in the row of cabbage I'm going to have late flat Dutch cabbage, um, early cabbage, and bok choy. So, and I've never grown bok choy before, but it, it's like 50, 60 days and it's cool. It likes cool weather, so it'll like it up here in Michigan because it doesn't get very hot here. And then I'm going to put a row of dill, and I think I'm going to do a row of my San Marzano tomatoes right smack down the middle of this garden. And over here, in these cages, I love these cages. They're fantastic. They have stood firm in a lot of wind. So you can see down in there, I've got tomatoes, and they're doing very good down in there. And when I planted those... Um, I'll show you the other ones. This one is a little bit smaller of a, of a cage, but look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? They're doing so well. And when I planted them, I, um, I had smelt that I had saved in my freezer for uh, putting in the hole with that. So I used smelt and I used some um, blood meal down in that after I dug my holes to plant them and boy I knew as soon as that those roots would reach that uh, smelt and that blood meal they'd take off like mad and they sure did so I was happy about that um, I've got all this section out here planted this is not an actual garden tour but just look at how gorgeous this stuff is doing I'm so happy I've got parsley growing here and I put it right in the corner by my tomatoes. I've got three yards of topsoil coming because I've got a couple of boxes that I need to fill. And um, this is one of them down here where I showed you. I've got to put um, some more soil in there. And I use topsoil and then I mix my own goodies in with it. And it really, really makes a nice soil. I've got a couple boxes over in that area along my property line that I need to amend and one right by the tree I need to amend that one. I'm going to put a little bit of topsoil in the very back part of my garden um, because it's kind of rocky back there so I'm going to rake out the rocks and amend that with a little topsoil. In this bed friends I planted a bunch of different varieties of kale along with lettuce. I had that extra lettuce in the greenhouse and I thought you know what I'm just gonna plant that and it's doing very well look at this beautiful this is uh, red scarlet kale look at the leaves on that isn't that gorgeous 
I got red scarlet. I've got um, Russian red. I've got blue curly kale. And um, you know, I'm not sure what kind this is. I think that's the dino kale. Anyway. Now over in this box, every year, usually it's in the box where I've got my onions, I always plant my uh, patty pan squash. And I just, I've got this bed is literally four by four. And I only need three plants because these things will be huge. And they produce just an absolute abundance of little tasty patty pan squash. I love it. I painted my little wagon again this year. Last year it was yellow. I painted it red. I love it. And then I put my little pot of pansies and vinca vine and some nasturtiums in there. Beautiful. My hostas always are doing well in there. I've got four hosta plants in there, and they always do beautiful in there. And in this bed, same thing. I've got potatoes coming up. Some plants are big, other ones are small. And you know, the more I think about it, the more I think that this must have been from when we got over here, because look at this one coming up. Where is it at, where is it at? I'll find it right there, just itty bitty. And then look at the size of this one. Remember when I told you, um, I'm gonna pull these out. Remember when I told you that uh, we got down to like 28 degrees and it just everything froze? I didn't have nothing planted, of course, but I, my potatoes, and usually potatoes are very, very frost hardy, but obviously they can't take 28 degrees, and they all froze back. And I said, you know what, I'm not worried about it, I'm not going to try and replant anything, because they will put up new shoots. And I think that's what it is, is these are just new shoots coming up from the other ones that were froze out because I've got all different sized potatoes in here and I planted them all at the same time. So that's the only thing I can think is that it was um, froze out and they're just now setting their new shoots. Same thing with this bed, friends. Um, when I find out exactly how much is coming up in here and how much space I'm gonna have, um, if I have any, any space available in here, I'm just going to put some bean, some bush beans in with the potatoes to fill up any, you know, void spots. And I'm always, this is straw, and it was so lively, it's got all kinds of stuff growing in it. So I'm constantly, you know, weeding this section over here. And it's all right. I like my potatoes to be weeded. Um, I'm going to need to go down to the, uh, I healed these up with um, old, um, dry not fresh grass clippings. I use dry grass clippings. If you use fresh grass clippings, you're gonna kill your potatoes because it, the heat, as soon as you start packing it in here, it's gonna create heat because it's gonna start composting and you will kill whatever you pack those, that fresh um, grass around. Best thing to do, if you have grass clippings, if you save them from home, Either put them in your compost, which is absolutely wonderful. Fresh grass clippings, old leaves, kitchen scraps. What a wonderful ingredient for startings of a compost. But if you're going to use them for mulch um, or putting around your potatoes, you're going to want them dry. So the best thing to do is just lay them out where the wind won't blow them away and just, just let them dry out. And then you can use them. And that's what I use. Look at all these little tomatoes growing in here. Come on, my tomato seeds. Look at them all in there. Get them out of there. I don't want any volunteer tomato plants in with my potatoes because they don't get along. So that's looking good. That barrel, I'm still not sure what I want to plant in it. Only I don't want that big chunk of grass growing in it. So we'll pull that out. I've got a lot of, um, I've got it amended in there. I've got some blood meal in there. And it's all ready to plant. I just got to decide what I want to put in there. Last year I had, um, 
a scarlet kale, some uh, marigolds, and a cabbage. But it didn't do well, so I'm not going to do that again this year. I even thought maybe some strawberries, but I'm not sure yet. Anyway, over there, by the tree there, that's the box that needs dirt. And then along there, those few boxes over there is what I need to amend and put more dirt into. So, now I will take you, I'm going to show you my pond. My mother came over yesterday, bless her heart, and it was warm out here. And she says, oh, I just want to clean out your herb garden and I want to play by your pond. But I'm going to show you this, it's absolutely gorgeous. I got a new fountain for my pond, and it does beautiful. It really does. And that, and that noise, I just love that noise. If you list, have your window open, when I have my window open at night, I can hear that wonderful noise from that water flowing. And I just love that. Anyway, look at, I want to show you my little, um, my little water irises are getting ready to bloom. This fall, I'm going to have to separate them up because they'll get root bound in that. But I've got mint and grasses, the ribbon grass, and I've got parsley, and I think I've got company, but maybe not. Um, parsley, I've got thyme that's coming back. I've got a um, fire and ice hosta. And all along the edge of the pond there, I've got um, sedum, and it's beautiful stuff. And I'm, I'm not sure what this is. I think this is a variegated sage. I believe that is variegated sage. But it's absolutely beautiful. And that's all coming back this year. So, and my thyme is doing really good. That's lemon thyme. Anyway, that is my pond. And this is a little happy place for me. My husband and I like to sit out here. I planted a beautiful geranium in my pot with some gazanias. Love them. Okay, so we'll open this up and I'll show you this stuff I just left outside here for the night. And it was absolutely fine. That's my red, um, that's all my different kales. That'll sell beautiful. There's my little sign, plant sale. Okay. Now, I had to put stuff together a little bit last night so I could close this all up. But this is nice. I've got my, my hanging baskets. And look, aren't they pretty? I've got all my, I've got all my hang, I've got all my hanging baskets up. I've got my little birdhouse gourds. I got one more birdhouse gourd to bring out. But I painted them. Isn't that a pretty yellow? We bored holes in them, cleaned them all out, and then painted them. But this is, a lot of this are little um, uh, flower pots that I put together. Just little porch pots. Aren't they pretty? I've got them in there. A lot of pansies. I got some gazanias in the back. I absolutely love gazanias. I got little butterflies that you can, they, they're on a wire, so you can either put them in your garden or you can wrap them around your branches and your trees. It attracts butterflies. And then here's, an, here's one of my salad bowls. This thing is enormous. See that? Absolutely. And then I've got my geranium planter there. Nice big spike behind it tomatoes. I've got lots of lettuce. I've just everything. Little Johnny jump ups. I got all kinds of stuff. And uh, down there I've got a big thing of big pot of marigolds. And they're already starting to bloom. Gorgeous. All my stuff. I got celery down here. All kinds of vegetables. See this happens sometimes. I think that it was just maybe it was cold in here. Maybe these got these got hit with a little cold last night. Well, we're going to have to take these out because I don't know if any of these will come back. They're just a little wilty. They don't feel mushy. A couple of them do. I'm going to leave them right there and wait and see. But everything else on the bottom, see how wonderful stuff is doing? 
I got onions down there, peppers, thyme. I grew this, friends, just from seed. I planted it last fall, or last winter, in my window. And look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. And it'll spread all around somebody's flower bed, or herb garden. So I got lots of stuff up here, lots of tomatoes. I got tomatoes that are even bigger. These are the ones I started in the house. These are gold nugget tomatoes. They'll do real good. Now see a lot I think a lot of my um cucumbers got a little cold, but they don't they don't feel mushy. So I don't know. Maybe they'll be okay. See? See all my cucumbers out here. So I'm gonna have to take these in tonight, otherwise I will lose all of them. And I'll do that. I'll take them in. So they'll be safe inside. Oh, it might have been because it was coming in from underneath the, um, see underneath by my, back there by my peppers. Anyway, we'll close this down. This is nice. That's what I've got my market stand. And I think it's pretty. I've already had, I had a lot of people come yesterday. Cucumbers are very sensitive plants. Though they come up fast, people like to plant them, you know, already started. So, those, I'll move. Some of them I might lose. That's all right. Anyway, so with all that being said, my friends, I, that's why you haven't seen much of me because I've been putting all this together and of course I'm by myself. So I don't have any help. So I have to do a little bit each day and I also have my grandbabies that I keep an eye on. That is why I have not had many videos going on. But I promise you I will be back and up and running normal with garden tours and chicken tours and how-tos and cooking. I just have to get all this put together. And it's kind of hard to make a video while I'm doing it because I am by myself. So you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.